Unit 1, Ancient Civilizations. Prior to talking about civilizations, we have to understand what a civilization is and what humans were doing prior to the development of civilization. So prior to development of civilization, we were in what was known as the Stone Age, the Paleolithic, Mesolithic, and Neolithic eras. People during this time are going to be nomads, moving from place to place in search of food. They're going to follow herds of animals. They're going to forage for other food sources, plants, grains, berries, and then they will move with the seasons with the animals once they have exhausted their food source. Now, because they are moving around constantly in search of food and following different herds of animals, there's not going to be permanent settlements. They need to be able to pick up and go whenever they need to. Early human migration patterns with the development of humans. Humans are going to develop here in East Africa at the earliest. They'll then later start to move up into Africa, into the current day Middle East, down into Indonesia, Australia. Eventually they'll cross the Bering Strait, enter into North America, and the last continent inhabited by humans is going to be South America. Now, how are people moving around at this time? Canoes, walking, they're going to try and stick close to the shore. The shore is going to give them a water source as well as a food source. We don't have the advent of sailing yet, and one of the main tools that's going to be used for hunting is a spear. So the Neolithic Revolution. Anytime we see the word revolution, that's going to mean a big change. Something's happening. A revolution is not always a war. It just simply means that there is a shift in something. We start to see less nomads, and we start to see permanent settlements due to the development of agriculture. If you are growing crops rather than foraging for your food, you're going to have to stay in the same place. There, you can't move around like they had in the past. We're also going to see the advent of domestication where you're going to take the plants that are producing the most and you're going to get the seeds from them in the hopes that the production of the next crop will be along the same lines and not less. So any crop that's not producing, you're not going to replant that one. We see irrigation developed as a way of bringing a water source to the crops. And then we also see the development of cities because, again, people are staying in one place. When you're farming... You're going to have more food, you're going to have a surplus, and you can feed a larger number of people. Whereas in a nomadic lifestyle, the less people is going to be a lot easier to move around with. During the Bronze Age, we start to see developments in weapon making. So instead of just having stone tools, we see bronze being smelted down into shields and to better weapons. Catahoyuk is the world's oldest farming site that we know of, located in what is modern-day Turkey or Anatolia. What archaeologists have been able to deduce from their finds is that it may have had between five and 6,000 people inhabiting it at one time. Why is this important? It tells us they have food, and they have a, food so a water source that can sustain this large of a population. We've also found shrines, statues. This shows us that they had some sort of religion, some sort of belief system. A rendering of what Catahoyuk would have looked like. We, the area that archaeologists have uncovered is roughly 30 acres large. The entrances to the houses were actually on the roofs. By connecting them, that would help protect them in case of an, an attack from a neighboring area. You can see the, the crop fields are going to be out here. You've got a water source to bring irrigation to your crops. It's a water source for you. You can also use the water as a transportation source. Again, with the advent of farming, you have expanding settlements because you're going to have more food. Therefore, you can have a higher population. Expansion leads to cities, irrigation, plus better harvest equals a surplus. A surplus is when you have extra than what you need. This is going to allow people to start trading their excess crops for other goods. So if you have more wheat than you need to feed your family, you can then trade that excess wheat for better tools that you can get in order to increase 
your crop yield in the later season. So what is a civilization? We start to see cities, so they're larger, more diverse than small villages. They've got defined boundaries, predominantly walls, in order to keep out attackers. And cities are also going to be trade centers. centers. So we're going to see people coming in with the seasons in order to hawk their wares, trade their surpluses for other goods. And then the actual definition of a civilization is it's a complex and organized society. There are five characteristics of civilizations. One, they have advanced cities. Two, they have complex institutions. A complex institution is government, religion, something that has many levels. Specialized workers. We've got some sort of record keeping and writing that's going to be useful for laws as well as tax purposes. And then advanced technology. You see them developing things in order to progress their civilization to make their jobs a little bit easier. An example of advanced technology would be irrigation. When civilizations trade with one another, we get what's called cultural diffusion. For something to diffuse, it means to spread. So we see religions being traded amongst societies. We've got different trade goods being traded between societies. We have different values, morals foods, ways of life, all being traded as people connect with each other. Some of the ancient civilizations of the old world. Here we have Mesopotamia located between the Tigris and the Euphrates River. We've got the Indus River Valley civilizations in modern day India. The Yellow River civilizations in modern day China. And then you have the Nile civilization or ancient Egypt.